Genetically modified organisms GMOs, are organisms whose genetic material has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally through mating or natural recombination. This modification is typically done in a laboratory setting, where specific genes are added, modified, or removed to achieve desired traits or characteristics. GMOs can be found in various forms, including plants, animals, and microorganisms. Common GMOs include genetically modified crops, such as corn, soybeans, and cotton, genetically engineered livestock, and genetically modified bacteria used in pharmaceuticals or industrial processes. Genetic engineering techniques, such as CRISPR-Cas9, recombinant DNA technology, and gene splicing, are commonly used to create GMOs. These methods allow scientists to insert or alter genes with precision. GMOs are created for various purposes, including increasing crop yields, improving resistance to pests and diseases, enhancing nutritional content, and reducing the need for chemical pesticides and herbicides. GMOs can also be designed for applications like pharmaceutical production and environmental remediation. GMOs have been the subject of intense debate. Concerns often revolve around their potential impacts on human health, the environment, and biodiversity. Advocates argue that GMOs can contribute to food security and sustainability, while critics raise concerns about unintended consequences, such as crossbreeding with non-GMO species. The regulation of GMOs varies by country. Some nations have stringent approval processes and labeling requirements for GMO products, while others have more permissive regulations. In the United States, for example, the FDA, USDA, and EPA oversee GMO safety and labeling. Before a GMO is approved for commercial use, it typically undergoes rigorous safety assessments to evaluate potential risks to human health and the environment. These assessments include toxicology studies, allergenicity testing, and environmental impact evaluations. Labeling requirements for GMO products differ globally. Some countries mandate clear labeling to inform consumers about GMO content in food products, while others do not. Labeling practices can influence public perception and acceptance of GMOs. GMOs have the potential to address critical global challenges, such as increasing food production to feed a growing population, reducing the need for chemical pesticides, and enhancing the nutritional quality of crops. However, GMOs pose ethical, ecological, and economic challenges. These include the potential for unintended environmental consequences, concerns about monopolies held by biotechnology companies, and issues related to intellectual property rights. Research in genetic engineering is ongoing, and future developments may lead to more precise and controlled modifications of organisms. This may help address some of the concerns associated with GMOs and open up new possibilities for agriculture, medicine, and industry. There are several genetically modified organisms, GMOs, that have been developed for various purposes. 1. Genetically modified crops. An example of this are the Roundup Ready crops. These are crops engineered to be resistant to the herbicide glyphosate, allowing farmers to control weeds without harming the crops. This includes soybeans, corn, cotton, and canola. Another example are the BT crops. These crops, such as corn and cotton, have been modified to produce Bacillus thuringiensis BT, toxin, which is toxic to certain insect pests. This reduces the need for chemical insecticides. 2. Golden rice is a type of rice that has been genetically modified to produce beta-carotene, a precursor of vitamin A. It aims to address vitamin A deficiency, a widespread health issue in many developing countries. 3. Arctic apples are apples that are modified to resist browning when sliced, as the gene responsible for browning has been suppressed. Next, we have the innate potatoes. 
These potatoes have reduced bruising and browning, minimizing the formation of acrylamide, a potential carcinogen, when the potatoes are cooked at high temperatures. Then, we have what we call the Aquadvantage salmon, this salmon is genetically modified to grow faster than conventional salmon, using a growth hormone from Chinook salmon and a gene promoter from an ocean pout. There are also the fast-growing trees. Certain tree species have been genetically modified to grow faster or be more resistant to pests and diseases. Enviropigs are pigs that were engineered to produce lower levels of phosphorus in their manure, aiming to reduce environmental pollution from agricultural waste. Another use of GMOs is the development of insect-resistant crops. Various crops have been modified to resist certain pests by incorporating genes from insects that deter those pests. Also, the development of herbicide-tolerant crops is another thing GMOs are for. Certain plants have been engineered to tolerate specific herbicides, allowing farmers to apply herbicides to kill weeds without affecting the crop. And then there is the creation of vaccines and pharmaceuticals in plants. Some plants have been genetically modified to produce vaccines or pharmaceutical compounds. For instance, tobacco plants have been engineered to produce proteins for potential vaccines. Genetic engineering is a process that involves altering the genetic material of an organism to introduce specific traits, characteristics, or behaviors. This process allows scientists to modify an organism's DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, which is the genetic code that dictates the organism's growth, development, and function. Genetic engineering is often used in biotechnology, agriculture, medicine, and research to achieve various goals, such as creating genetically modified organisms, GMOs, developing novel treatments, and studying gene functions. So how is GE done? First, scientists begin by identifying the specific genes they want to modify or introduce into the target organism. These genes could code for desired traits like resistance to diseases, increased crop yields, or the production of specific proteins. Second, the DNA containing the target genes is isolated from a source organism. This source can be of the same species or a different one, depending on the desired traits. In some cases, synthetic DNA sequences are created. Third, the isolated DNA containing the target genes is inserted into the genetic material of the recipient organism. This can be achieved through various methods, such as gene splicing, recombinant DNA technology, or more modern techniques like CRISPR-Cas9. Fourth, after insertion, the modified DNA must be incorporated into the recipient organism's genome. This may require the use of vectors, such as plasmids and bacteria, to carry the foreign DNA into the host organism's cells. Fifth, not all transformed cells will have successfully incorporated the new DNA. Selection methods are used to identify and isolate the cells that have the desired genetic changes. Sixth, the successfully modified cells are then grown and multiplied in culture to produce more organisms with the desired traits. In the case of plants, this can involve growing whole transgenic plants from transformed cells. Seventh, the modified organisms are rigorously tested to ensure that the intended genetic changes have occurred and that they express the desired traits without unintended side effects. This includes safety assessments. Finally, the genetically engineered organisms can be used for various applications. In agriculture, they may be used to develop genetically modified crops, while in medicine, they can be used to produce pharmaceuticals or create genetically modified animals for research or therapeutic purposes. Roles of Enzymes in G.E. Enzymes play a crucial role in genetic engineering by facilitating various processes involved in the manipulation of DNA. Enzymes are biological molecules that act as catalysts, speeding up chemical reactions without being consumed in the process. In genetic engineering, 
Specific enzymes are used to cut, splice, replicate, and modify DNA, making it possible to insert or delete genes and create genetically modified organisms, GMOs. Restriction enzymes, endonucleases, are used to cut DNA at specific recognition sites, known as restriction sites. They cleave the DNA at these sites, creating fragments with sticky ends, single-stranded overhangs, that can be easily joined with other DNA fragments. Restriction enzymes are crucial for gene cloning and recombinant DNA technology. After DNA has been cut by restriction enzymes, DNA ligases play the role of genetic glue. They catalyze the joining of DNA fragments by forming phosphodiester bonds between the sugar phosphate backbones of adjacent DNA strands. DNA ligases are essential for creating recombinant DNA molecules. DNA polymerases are enzymes responsible for DNA replication, copying the genetic material during cell division. In genetic engineering, DNA polymerases are used for processes like polymerase chain reaction, PCR, which amplifies specific DNA sequences, and DNA sequencing, allowing researchers to read the genetic code. Reverse transcriptases are used to create complementary DNA, cDNA, from messenger RNA, mRNA, templates. This is important in gene expression studies and for cloning eukaryotic genes that do not have introns. Nucleases are enzymes that hydrolyze phosphodiester bonds in DNA or RNA. They can be used to digest unwanted DNA or RNA sequences in a sample, allowing for the selective removal of specific sequences during genetic engineering. Exonucleases enzymes that degrade DNA or RNA by removing nucleotides from the ends of a nucleic acid molecule. Exonucleases can be used to trim or clean up DNA ends to prepare them for further manipulation or cloning. DNA methylases add methyl groups to specific nucleotides in DNA, a process known as DNA methylation. This is important for controlling gene expression and can be utilized in genetic engineering to regulate gene activity. Cas proteins, such as Cas9, are used in the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing system. They are guided by RNA molecules to target specific DNA sequences, where they induce double-strand breaks. This system allows precise and highly customizable gene editing. Topoisomerases help relieve the torsional stress that builds up in DNA during processes like replication and transcription. They can be used to manipulate DNA topology, making it easier to work within genetic engineering procedures. DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, is a complex and essential molecule that carries genetic information in living organisms. It serves as the blueprint for the development, functioning, growth, and reproduction of all known life forms. DNA has a double helix structure, meaning it consists of two long chains of nucleotides that spiral around each other. Each nucleotide is composed of three components. Deoxyribose sugar is a five-carbon sugar that forms the backbone of the DNA strand. A phosphate group is attached to the deoxyribose sugar and provides a negative charge. There are four nitrogenous bases in DNA, namely, adenine, A, thymine, T, guanine, G, and cytosine, C. These bases pair with each other, A with T, and G with C. DNA follows a specific base pairing rule, where adenine, A, pairs with thymine, T, and guanine, G, pairs with cytosine, C. This complementary base pairing is crucial for the replication and transcription of DNA. DNA stores the genetic information in the sequence of its nitrogenous bases. The sequence of bases in a DNA molecule is like a code that contains instructions for building and maintaining an organism. Genes are specific segments of DNA that carry information for the synthesis of proteins and other molecules. DNA can replicate itself, a process crucial for cell division and the transmission of genetic information from one generation to the next. 
During replication, the two strands of the DNA molecule unwind and serve as templates for the formation of two identical DNA molecules. In eukaryotic organisms, organisms with a cell nucleus, DNA is organized into structures called chromosomes. Each species has a characteristic number of chromosomes, and these contain all the genetic information necessary for the organism's development and functioning. DNA is a long molecule, and it must be tightly packaged to fit within the cell's nucleus. Histone proteins help package the DNA into a structure known as chromatin, which can further condense into chromosomes during cell division. The genetic information in DNA is transcribed into a molecule called messenger RNA mRNA, during a process known as transcription. This mRNA carries the genetic code from the nucleus to the ribosomes, where protein synthesis, translation, occurs. The sequence of nitrogenous bases in DNA forms a genetic code, with each triplet of bases, codon, corresponding to a specific amino acid. These amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and the order of codons determines the sequence of amino acids in a protein. Changes in the DNA sequence, known as mutations, can occur naturally or due to external factors like radiation or chemicals. Mutations can lead to genetic diversity and can have various effects on an organism, including disease or adaptation. DNA is fundamental for the inheritance of traits, the diversity of life, and the continuity of genetic information. It is present in all living organisms, from single-celled bacteria to complex multicellular animals and plants. Roles of GMOs related to environmental and ecological health GMOs are often developed to enhance crop traits such as resistance to pests, diseases, and herbicides. This can lead to increased agricultural productivity, reduced chemical pesticide use, and potentially less environmental harm. GMOs have been explored for their potential to remediate environmental issues. For example, certain genetically modified plants can be designed to absorb heavy metals from contaminated soil, helping to clean up polluted environments. GMOs have also been considered for use in the conservation and restoration of endangered or threatened species. Genetic modification can be used to boost the resilience of species or populations facing environmental challenges. Certain genetically engineered crops can also reduce soil erosion by providing ground cover, which, in turn, can help protect ecosystems and water quality. Genetically modified microorganisms can be used to break down pollutants or contaminants in various environments, helping to mitigate pollution and its impacts. Some GMOs are designed to improve the nutritional content of crops. For example, golden rice has been engineered to contain higher levels of vitamin A, potentially addressing nutritional deficiencies in certain populations. Genetic modification can be used to enhance the growth and productivity of biofuel crops, providing a more sustainable source of energy while potentially reducing the environmental impact associated with fossil fuels. Certain GMOs can be developed to be more drought-tolerant, reducing the need for extensive irrigation and potentially conserving water resources. In some cases, GMOs have been proposed for controlling invasive species, potentially minimizing their negative impacts on ecosystems. GMOs in NON food crops and microorganisms Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, are not limited to food crops. They have applications in non-food crops and microorganisms as well. Non-food crops Genetically modified cotton varieties, such as Bt cotton, have been developed to express a protein toxic to certain insect pests. This reduces the need for chemical insecticides and enhances cotton crop yields. Genetic modification has been used to create ornamental plants with altered traits, including changes in color, size, and resistance to pests. For example, genetically modified blue roses were developed by introducing genes responsible for blue pigment production. 
crops like switchgrass and poplar trees have been genetically modified to increase their suitability as feedstock for biofuel production. These modifications can enhance the yield of biofuels while reducing environmental impacts. Tobacco plants have been genetically modified to produce valuable proteins and pharmaceutical compounds. The tobacco plant serves as a bioreactor for the production of vaccines, antibodies, and other biopharmaceuticals. Genetically modified grasses with traits such as resistance to herbicides and improved drought tolerance have been developed for landscaping and golf courses. Microorganisms Certain bacteria have been genetically modified to break down and remediate environmental pollutants, such as oil spills or toxic waste. These modified microorganisms can help in cleaning up contaminated sites. Yeast strains have been engineered to improve ethanol production from plant biomass in the biofuel industry. They can efficiently convert plant sugars into ethanol, a renewable fuel source. Various microorganisms, including bacteria and fungi, have been genetically modified to produce enzymes used in industrial processes, such as paper and textile manufacturing. These enzymes can improve efficiency and reduce environmental impact. Some bacteria have been engineered to produce therapeutic proteins, including insulin and human growth hormone, for pharmaceutical applications. These microorganisms serve as bioreactors for the production of biopharmaceuticals. Beneficial microorganisms like nitrogen-fixing bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi have been genetically modified to enhance their interactions with plants, leading to increased crop productivity and reduced fertilizer use. Certain engineered microorganisms are used in wastewater treatment plants to enhance the breakdown of organic matter and pollutants, improving the efficiency of sewage treatment. Some probiotic bacteria have been genetically modified to enhance their health-promoting properties, such as resistance to stomach acids and better adhesion to the gut lining. Benefits of GMOs Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, offer several potential benefits to humans, primarily in the fields of agriculture, medicine, and industry. GMOs in agriculture have the potential to increase crop yields by making plants more resistant to pests, diseases, and environmental stress. This can help address food scarcity issues and improve food security, especially in regions prone to agricultural challenges. Some GMOs, such as insect-resistant crops, example, Bt crops, produce their insecticides internally, reducing the need for external chemical pesticide application. This can benefit both the environment and human health by minimizing exposure to harmful chemicals. Genetic modification can be used to improve the nutritional profile of certain crops. For instance, golden rice was engineered to contain higher levels of vitamin A, potentially addressing nutritional deficiencies in populations where vitamin A deficiency is prevalent. In medicine, genetically modified microorganisms are used in the production of vaccines, pharmaceuticals, and other therapeutic proteins. GMOs enable more efficient and cost-effective production of medications and therapies, benefiting human health. Certain GMOs, such as fruits and vegetables modified for delayed ripening, can have an extended shelf life. This can reduce food waste and allow produce to reach consumers with better quality and freshness. Some GMOs are engineered to require fewer resources, such as water and fertilizers. Drought-resistant crops or plants with nitrogen-fixing abilities can contribute to sustainable agricultural practices. Genetically modified microorganisms are employed in cleaning up environmental pollutants. These microorganisms have the potential to degrade or remove contaminants from soil, water, and air, aiding in environmental restoration. GMOs are utilized in the production of biofuels, enzymes for industrial processes, and other renewable resources. This can reduce reliance on non-renewable resources and decrease the environmental impact of various industrial practices. 
Genetically engineered organisms play a significant role in scientific research, allowing scientists to study gene functions, disease mechanisms, and potential treatments for various conditions. GMO technology allows for precise modifications that can be tailored to specific needs, leading to the development of crops with desirable traits, such as resistance to specific diseases or tolerance to environmental stressors. Potential Risks of GMOs The potential risks associated with genetically modified organisms, GMOs, in relation to human health are a subject of ongoing debate and scrutiny. Some concerns have been raised, although evidence supporting direct adverse effects on human health from consuming GMOs is currently limited. Genetic modification might introduce new proteins into foods, potentially triggering allergic reactions in sensitive individuals. However, strict regulatory procedures usually involve allergenicity assessments before GMOs are approved for human consumption. The long-term effects of consuming GMOs are not entirely understood. Comprehensive, independent, long-term studies regarding the effects of GMO consumption on human health are limited, making it challenging to draw firm conclusions. Some genetic engineering techniques involve using antibiotic resistance genes as markers during the modification process. There are concerns that this might contribute to the potential spread of antibiotic resistance in the environment, though regulatory bodies often require assessments to minimize such risks. There are concerns that the process of genetic modification or the proteins produced by GMOs could potentially create harmful substances or toxins. Safety assessments are designed to identify and mitigate these risks before GMOs are approved for human consumption. Some studies suggest that GMOs or associated chemicals may influence the gut microbiota, which could have implications for human health. However, the direct impact and the significance of these effects are still under investigation. Genetic modification processes can sometimes produce unintended changes in the genome beyond the intended modifications, raising concerns about unexpected outcomes or mutations that could impact human health. There's a risk of gene flow from GMOs to non-GMO crops, which can lead to unintended contamination. This may raise concerns for those who wish to avoid GMOs in their diets or for organic farming. In regions without mandatory GMO labeling, consumers may not have the choice to know or avoid GMOs in their food, limiting their ability to make informed decisions about what they consume. Potential Environmental Risks Caused by GMOs Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, can pose several potential environmental risks, which need to be carefully considered and managed. These risks primarily pertain to the introduction and cultivation of genetically modified crops. One of the major concerns is the potential for gene flow from genetically modified crops to their wild or non-GMO relatives. Pollen from GMO crops can be carried by wind or insects to nearby wild or non-GMO plants, leading to hybridization. This gene flow can introduce GMO traits into natural populations, potentially altering their genetic diversity or ecological interactions. Some genetically modified crops are engineered for herbicide resistance. When these crops crossbreed with wild plants, the resulting hybrids may inherit herbicide-resistant traits. Over time, this can lead to the development of herbicide-resistant superweeds, which are challenging to control and can reduce biodiversity. The cultivation of herbicide-resistant GMO crops has sometimes led to an increase in herbicide usage, as farmers may use more herbicides to combat resistant weeds. This can have negative environmental impacts, such as increased chemical runoff into water bodies and potential harm to non-target organisms. In the case of genetically modified crops expressing insecticidal proteins, example, Bt crops, pests may evolve resistance to these toxins. This can reduce the effectiveness of the GMOs, requiring alternative pest management practices, potentially leading to increased pesticide use.
GMO crops that target specific pests may inadvertently affect other organisms in the ecosystem, including beneficial insects and non-target species. This disruption can impact natural predator-prey relationships and ecosystem health. The widespread adoption of a small number of genetically modified crop varieties can reduce agricultural biodiversity. A reduction in the number of cultivated crop varieties can result in genetic homogenization and vulnerability to pests, diseases, and environmental changes. The environmental impact of GMOs may extend to non-target organisms, including beneficial insects, birds, and aquatic life. For example, Bt toxins produced by some GMO crops can affect non-target insect species. Some GMOs and the associated agricultural practices can affect soil microorganisms, potentially disrupting soil ecosystems and nutrient cycling. The dominance of genetically modified crop varieties can lead to the displacement of traditional crop varieties and local agricultural practices, potentially eroding genetic diversity and cultural heritage. The long-term ecological consequences of GMO cultivation are not fully understood. Unintended effects on ecosystems, particularly those with complex interactions, may only become apparent over extended periods. Potential Health Risks Caused by GMOs The potential health risks associated with genetically modified organisms, GMOs, have been a subject of debate and concern. While GMOs undergo safety assessments and regulatory scrutiny before approval for commercial use, there are still various health-related questions and potential risks that need to be considered. There is a concern that the introduction of genes from allergenic sources into GMOs could lead to new allergens in the food supply. People with allergies may react adversely to these allergenic proteins, potentially causing allergic reactions. There is uncertainty about the potential toxicity of some GMOs, particularly those that produce new proteins or compounds. There is a risk that GMOs could introduce substances that are harmful to human health, especially if these substances were not present in the original non-GMO crop. The process of genetic modification can have unintended effects on an organism's biology. These effects may not be immediately apparent, and there could be unexpected consequences that affect the safety of GMOs. In the past, some GMOs included antibiotic resistance marker genes. There were concerns that these genes could be transferred to human gut bacteria, potentially contributing to antibiotic resistance, a significant public health concern. There are limited long term studies on the health impacts of consuming GMOs. Long term health effects, including chronic health conditions and cancers, are not yet fully understood, and there are concerns about unforeseen risks. The inadvertent presence of GMOs in non GMO or organic foods due to cross contamination can potentially expose consumers to GMOs unknowingly, especially when they have allergies or specific dietary preferences. Changes in the composition of GMO crops could affect their digestibility and nutrient availability. Altered nutrient profiles may have implications for the nutritional value of GMO-derived foods. Some genetic modifications involve the suppression of specific genes to achieve desired traits. There are concerns that these genetic alterations might interfere with normal human gene regulation or pose health risks. There are several movies and documentaries that address the topic of genetically modified organisms, GMOs, in various ways. These films explore the science, ethics, environmental impact, and social aspects of GMOs. Directed by Robert Kenner, this documentary takes a comprehensive look at the food industry, including the impact of GMOs on agriculture and the food supply. It delves into the ethical and environmental issues related to industrial food production. Filmmaker Jeremy Seifert explores the world of GMOs and the influence of large agribusiness companies on food production. The film also examines concerns about GMO labeling and consumer awareness. 
Directed by Jeffrey Smith, this documentary raises questions about the safety of GMOs and their potential health and environmental risks. It features interviews with scientists, physicians, and farmers. This documentary, directed by Gary Null, criticizes the biotech industry's claims about the safety and benefits of GMOs. It presents alternative perspectives on genetically modified crops. Directed by Marie Monique Robin, this documentary provides a critical examination of the Monsanto Corporation, a major player in the biotech and GMO industry. It discusses issues related to GMO patents, seed control, and environmental concerns. Filmmaker Og Giroux explores GMOs and the debate surrounding their safety in the context of her personal journey to understand the implications of genetically modified foods. Based on Michael Pollan's book of the same name, this documentary discusses the evolution of the Western diet, including the impact of processed foods and GMOs. It offers insights into healthier eating habits. While not exclusively focused on GMOs, this documentary follows two college friends as they grow an acre of corn and explore the influence of corn production on the American food system, which includes GMO corn. This Netflix documentary series covers various aspects of the food industry, including one episode titled The Peanut Problem, which examines issues related to food allergies, labeling, and genetic modification. Directed by Deborah Kunz Garcia, this documentary explores the impact of biotechnology on the world's food supply, including concerns about GMOs and the consolidation of the seed industry.